Hello folks, welcome to another video for Teamfight Tactics, and welcome to the start of Set 5 of Teamfight Tactics. This is taken from the very first day of Set 5's release. I've been doing a series of videos on the public beta environment, but Set 5 has now been officially released. We no longer have to play on the PvE, we can actually play on the normal client. This is going to be taken from a ranked game placement match, so here we are right at the start of the season, and having had the chance to practice on the beta environment, I'm diving right into ranked play, where hopefully I have a bit of an advantage because I've already run all these games on the PvE against some other people who might not have had that opportunity. Now, I'm going to use this video because it's the very beginning of Set 5. As an introduction, I'm going to assume that you don't have any familiarity with Teamfight Tactics, so I'll go through some of the basic background, and then we'll work through this game and talk a little bit about what's different and new specifically in this set, and then continue to uh, look at what some things might be interested to keep in mind moving forward here in Teamfight Tactics. Teamfight Tactics is, of course, an auto chess game. That's kind of the name that's been given to this particular genre. It is a game where you form a team based on having these little legends, or the, you use the League of Legends champions to form a team. Your character is the little legend. I have the little Sakura Feather Knights, the cute little bird with the sword. Rounds will always start with an initial carousel where you take one champion and one item. And uh, what strategy you're trying to play into will depend, uh, is one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're grabbing that. I went for a tier, which is an item that provides mana, which is something that's going to be helpful for me in this game. Then you go through a series of minion rounds. I've gone through three minion rounds here. I am building my initial team here. You can see that I've already made, uh, gotten three copies of one of these champions, Lissandra. So uh, if you're not unfamiliar with this, champions start at one star level. If you find three of them, you get a two star champion. Your goal usually is to try to two star as many champions as you can. They form the core of your team. And then if you can find nine copies of a champion, three two stars, then you get the rare three star version of a champion, which tends to be very powerful. But it's generally hard to get three stars, and typically it's not worth trying to go for them, except under certain circumstances. I have managed to two-star the Lissandra, and now I've managed to two-star the Warwick here. So these units are going to be quite strong. And in fact, having a, a pair of two-star units at the very start of the game is quite strong. So I'm expecting that I'll be able to get off to a nice win streak here at the start of the game. I actually have five Lissandras, so there's some three three-star potential here. As you build your team, each of the champions will have traits associated with them. For example, the Lissandra has two traits. One is called Coven and one is called Renewer. I don't have either of these traits in the game right now because you need multiple copies of units to get those traits in. If you look on the bar on the left-hand side, it reads Coven one out of three, Renewer one out of two. So I do not have either of those traits in the game right now. I do have Brawler in the game right now. That's because Brawler is one of the traits on Gragas and Brawler is also a trait on Warwick. So Brawler, what it does is it provides extra health to the units. It's one of the most simple traits. Some of them get more complicated, but Brawler just provides additional health. So Warwick gets extra health. I think that they get 400 additional health at Brawler 2. I don't have the exact number in front of me, and it'll change in patches anyway. But Brawlers are typically frontline units. They're tanky units. You put them up to protect your team, and they, uh, you know, they can stand there and tank extra damage because they get extra health. So the game is all about building a team together. You want to get different uh, units that pair together well. Some t units obviously have more synergy when working together than other units. And you want to put them together so that they uh, get lots of traits in play and have a chance to uh, form a team that functions together. When you're playing Teamfight Tactics, you always want to identify some kind of carry unit. That is, a unit who's going to carry the damage load for your team. Eventually, you can get to the point where you have multiple threats on your team, but you know you do generally want to be playing through like one key unit that's going to be your uh, main source of damage. And for me, that's Lissandra here in the early game. I've already made two items that are really good on Lissandra. I've made a blue buff that was formed by the two tiers that will cause her to cast more often. Tiers provide mana. Mana is how units cast spells. In Teamfight Tactics, everybody has an ability. And uh, when the Mana Bar fills up, you will cast a spell. So she has a blue buff, which causes her to cast more often. And she has an item called Jeweled Gauntlet for her other item that I just made. And that causes her uh, spells to do more damage. It is uh, increases the damage that they do. Uh, technically, it causes the spells to have a chance to critically strike, which naturally spells can't do. But uh, it causes her spells to have a chance to critically strike and also deal more damage. Uh, so... Items are a huge part of the game, and in fact, items are really the big feature in set 5, uh, so I'll talk more about them in a minute. So that's the overall gameplay, uh, kind of the setup that we have here. 
I also find yet another two star. Uh, I'm I'm high rolling pretty good here in the sense that I have found yet another two star unit. It's very unusual to have this many two stars on the board early on. Now I am planning to play into a team comp based on a unit uh, called Karma later on. I'm actually building items for Karma right now and putting them on Lissandra, and Lissandra's going to hold those items until uh, Karma shows up in the shop later on in the game. I should probably talk a bit about the shop. You can see that at the start of every single round, you have the chance to purchase champions. Uh, they show up in the shop, they cost gold to purchase. For example, there are two Zigs in the shop right now. The Zigs cost one gold to purchase. I actually have no money at all right now. I have zero gold because I've been spending a lot of it on buying champions. And uh, you do want to get as much gold as you can. Economy is very important in this game. And my econ is actually pretty weak right now. So I'm hoping I can win rounds to make up for that. Uh, the one downside to getting lots of strong champions early on, which I do have here, is of course they cost money. And so by doing that, I'm cutting into my economy. And I'll talk more about how the economy works as the game goes on. But first we have another carousel here. So let's go ahead and look at the carousel. Uh, there are nine total champions, each one holding an item. And so we'll get a chance to pick one of them off this carousel. Now I am going to be last to pick. Uh, the order, the first carousel, everybody picks at the same time. But after that, you pick on the carousel based on how much health you have. So the people with the least health pick first, and then the two people with the second least health pick after that. And then uh, the people with the most health pick at the very end. So this is one of the balancing features in the game. The sense that you, if you have a lot of health and you're winning the game, uh, players get a chance to come back by being able to... Uh, pick first on the carousel so they have a better chance to get the stuff that they want. Now I have picked up an item that is a chain vest, but it's an unusual kind of chain vest and this speaks to the uh, one of the new features added here in set 4.5. Uh, and that is the addition of shadow items and that's the big featured thing in set 5 if you're new to this set. Uh, in addition to the normal 9 standard items, set 5 introduces shadow items which are harder to get they never drop from minion rounds. You can only get them either from uh, one of the carousels or also from the armory, which is another uh, feature that's been introduced, which I'll talk about when it pops up again. So they're harder to get. They, are, they tend to be very powerful items. Uh, the difference is they almost always come with some kind of negative downside in addition to their uh, positives. So normal items only have positive effects. The shadow items have negative effects, but they are more powerful as well. So that's kind of the uh, trade-off there. And being able to use shadow items well is one of the keys to being successful here in uh, set in set five. So it's a, it does create a pretty big burden of knowledge for new players because you have to learn not just all of the standard items, you also have to learn all of these shadow items as well, which can be really confusing. The good news is they tend to be very similar to the normal items, but it's still the case that there's a lot to learn here. And this is going to be a, a difficult set for people who are unfamiliar with the game to pick up. That said, you, this is still a great time to start learning teamfight tactics because it's the beginning of the set and everyone's going to have a lot to learn. But uh, I'm not going to lie, this is probably the least newcomer friendly set that they have released so far just because it's there's a lot of knowledge here that has to be picked up. Not just who all the champions are, not just what their traits are, but uh, you have to know what the items do and also what the shadow items do. So there's like 50-ish normal items and then there's like another 50 shadow items. So it's, uh, it's not the easiest system to pick up. So just fair warning about that. Anyway, as far as the actual rounds go, I'm kind of dumpstering everybody here at the start of the game. So that's pretty good. I've just hit so many two stars here. Um, I'm what the community would call high rolling, pretty good here. I've hit, I've just basically hit everything. I've done two star, two star, two star, two star. And so that's gotten me off to a very nice winning streak here, which is actually extremely important because I'm low on gold. I only have 12 gold in the bank, which is much less than you'd want to have here at the start of the game. But I can offset that by the fact that I am on a win streak. So let's talk about win streaks here briefly, shall we? The way that the gold income system works in this game, is you always get five gold to start every round. So you'll always get five gold at the start of each round. And then you get additional gold based on two things. One of them is if you're on a win streak or a loss streak. You start picking up more gold when you are on a streak, and you generally want to be on a streak if you can at all times. Obviously, that's not always possible, but you want to be on a streak. Once you've won or lost uh, two rounds in a row, you start getting extra gold, and then it caps out after winning or losing five rounds in a row. If you have won uh, five rounds in a row, you get three additional gold at the start of each round, which is really nice. So in addition to that five base gold, 
I get another three gold by the fact that I am on a win streak right now. So it's really important for me to keep this win streak going as long as possible. Then in addition to that, you also get more gold based on how much gold you have in the bank. And it's for every 10 gold you have in the bank, you get an additional one gold at the start of each round. So I have 30 gold in the bank right now. So I will get an additional three gold at the start of the next round. So I would get the, I would get the base five, and then I get another three for being on a win streak, and then I get another three for having 30 gold in the bank. So that would be 11 gold as opposed to five gold. And that makes a big difference. So you really do want to get up to five gold, to uh, 50 gold in the bank if you can. But the trade off is by having that gold sitting in your bank, it's not doing anything. It's not making you stronger. It's not going into champions. And it's also not going into rerolling, which is something I'll talk more about in time. Uh, so, and, you know, you have, we want to spend money to purchase champions. You also want to spend money to level. But if you're doing that, it's not sitting in your bank accruing income. And so that's kind of the basic trade off in this game. All right, so we're going to now have a new armory. So this is a new feature in set five. You get a chance to pick an item at the start. Uh, you'll get two items randomly on stage two, two and stage three, two, and you get a chance to pick one of them. So you get like some limited control over what you can pick up here at the start of these rounds. And so I went ahead and picked the, uh, what is it, the cloak right there between the two. It wasn't the item I most wanted. I kind of would have preferred a, a rod, which would give me more ability power. But I was able to get a good item. I get the cloak. And the cloak is useful because I can use it, combine it with the uh, shadow item. And I can make an item called Gargoyle Stone, the shadow version of Gargoyle Stone Plate. Now, the normal version of Gargoyle Stone Plate provides additional... Um, armor and magic resistance for each unit that's attacking the target. It's a good tank item. The shadow version provides additional healing for each unit attacking the target. It's an early game item. It doesn't scale great into the late game, but it's going to make Warwick very hard to kill because he's going to heal back, I think it's 40 health every second for each enemy unit targeting him. So he's going to be very hard to kill because the more people that group up and try to kill him, the more health he's going to regenerate. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I also had a really nice move here in this particular stage. I was scouting the other comps. I was scouting, and it looked like this player, Doubt, was one of the stronger players. So I looked at that person's board. I saw where he had, he had a, as an assassin unit named Nocturne on his board. That was kind of his main unit. Uh, I saw that that unit was positioned to hit the left-hand side. So I moved my Lissandra over to the right-hand side just in time. And my Lissandra, who's my main damage source, did not get jumped on by Nocturne. And I think that's the main reason why I won that round, which is really important because it keeps my win streak going. So other things you want to keep in mind, you are able to spend gold on champions. I talked about that. You always have champions in the store, but you can also spend it on doing two other things. One is leveling. It costs four gold for four XP. You can see the experience bar on the bottom left-hand side of the interface. It says level six, two out of 36 experience. Every level that you go up, you're able to play an additional unit. So I'm level six. That means right now I can play six units. So this is, a, this is a big deal. Obviously, the more units you can play, the better it is for your team. So you want to be able to level as much as you can. Uh, like the ideal setup from an economic perspective is you want to get to 50 gold and then dump anything beyond 50 gold into leveling. And that's kind of like the basic core idea of the game. But by doing that, of course, you're only seeing one shop every round. The other thing you can do and what you have to do if you're not particularly strong is you can spend two gold to re-roll the shop. So that, of course, doesn't make you stronger immediately. It's, you know, it's gold that doesn't go into champions. It's gold that doesn't go into leveling to get you to higher levels. But you get to see another shop. And if your team is weak, if you're not hitting the units you want to hit, then it's something you need to do. So knowing when to re when to roll the shop in order to get more champions to so that you can become stronger is one of the key things in this game. It's honestly the biggest strategic decision in the game is thinking about when do you uh, when do you roll, when do you level. You get to make some really interesting decisions in that respect, and uh, that's really the meat of the gameplay. Is it's not just building the teams. It's all about when do I level, when do I not level, that sort of thing. So like right here, I'd love to get up to level seven and play another unit, but like it, it would cost me what? It would cost me uh, 32 gold or thir yeah, 32 gold to level. I don't really want to do that because that would drop me all the way down to 20 gold. I want to keep this income in the bank. So I have to keep in mind, uh, yeah, I want to keep the win streak going. It's really important I keep the win streak going. But also if I, if I level too early and cut into my income, then it's also going to decrease how much gold I'm getting for the next round. Uh, right now I'm actually getting the maximum income per round. I'm at 50 gold, so I get five from interest. I get the base five, and then I want a max win streak, so I get another three. So I get right now 13 gold per round, which is just enormous because most of the other players are probably only getting, I don't know, like 
7 to 10 gold per round, and I'm getting 13. So as you can imagine, if you're getting double the income of other players, you're going to start to, you know, pull away from them economically. And that's what I'm hoping to do as the game goes on. I still have not lost a round yet. I've just been tearing apart these other teams. As far as the traits I'm playing right now, I've, uh, let's see, I still have the... What was the trade I was playing through? Oh, actually, I do not have Brawler in. That was the trade I was playing earlier. I've taken that out. I have Renewer in, which gives health and mana regeneration. I have Knight in, which is a frontline trait, reduces some of the damage the Knight's unit take. And then I have Dawnbringer in, which is a trait that causes Dawnbringer units to uh, regenerate health when they drop below half in the fights. Then here, I see it only costs 10 more gold to level, so I went ahead and leveled to... Uh, I went ahead and leveled up to 7 because it's very important I keep this win streak going. It will more than pay for itself if I uh, continue the win streak into this uh, minion round at the end of stage 3 because the minion rounds do count as far as getting that extra income. Uh, so, you know, if I can carry a 10-match winning streak into this minion round, that will be fantastic. And the good news is it looks like we'll be able to do that because I'm kind of tearing through this team without much trouble. Uh, we were up against someone who's playing a trick a trait called Abomination, which causes a Scion to pop up out of a grave at the end of the round. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty amusing trait. Very, very clever design. Uh, similarly, this person, Jason Lippy, uh, just barely won a round, and that was actually bad for me because that person was on a win streak. It would have been great if that person had lost, and then their win streak would have been over. So I've been building Dawnbringer units on uh, my bench right now. That's the trait I'm playing into because that's the trait that is most useful for Karma, and she is the, the champion I'm looking to play towards. But I have so many two-stars, that's one of the reasons why I've been so strong. I mean, my board is six two-star units, which is really high for this early in the game, particularly since I have not had to reroll the shop even one time. So uh, my goal is just continue pushing to, I want to push higher levels. I want to get to a higher level as soon as possible where I have better odds to find some of these other champions. So let's talk about that because I haven't mentioned that yet so far. Here I'm going to replace Poppy with Tarek. Uh, if you look at the interface, if you look right above the character portraits, you'll see little percentages. Uh, I'm actually scouting other teams right now, so this is not a great time to do that. But 19%, 35%, 30%, 15%, 1%. This is a reference to the tier of the units that you can buy. So some units are more expensive and better than other units. In the shop right now, Draven costs 4 gold, whereas Leona only costs 1 gold. Those percentages are the odds of finding those units. So for example, right now at level 7, I have 19% odds to find 1 cost units, 35% odds to find 2 cost units, and etc, etc. So you can't get to the best, most strongest units until you reach higher levels. And so that's one of the reasons why you really want to push to higher levels. You have access to more expensive and better units, units that can form the core of your team comp. So I'm trying to get up to level 8 in particular, because at level 8, I have much better odds to find both 4 cost and 5 cost units, which are the best units, and I want to build my team comp around them. Now, unfortunately, I ran up against this Morgana on the other team, and Morgana was able to counter my team really well, and unfortunately I narrowly lose that round. I was like, oh, that's super sad. Morgana got off in an outstanding ultimate that was really strong, and just uh, caused all kinds of problems for my team. So that was a bit disappointing. My win streak comes to an end, and that actually cost me a lot of gold because instead of getting the three extra gold per round, I don't get any extra gold because now I'm not on a win streak or a loss streak. I've just lost one round. So, you know, going from 13 gold per round to 10 gold per round is, you know, not ideal. Uh, of course, you, I should also mention this because it hasn't happened yet before this point. When you lose rounds, you lose health. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? You win rounds, you don't take damage. You lose rounds, you take damage. The uh, closer the fight, the less damage you take for a loss. And of course, that goes both ways. So inflicting big punishing losses on other players is always something you want to do because they'll take more health at lost as that goes on. Everybody starts with 100 health. When they hit zero, they're out of the game. The game goes on until it's down to just one player remaining, and then that person wins the lobby. Uh, here in ranked play, you gain uh, the ranking points, LP, for having a top four finish, and you lose them for having a bottom four finish. So your goal is always to try to top four. That's always what you want to try to do. So like this round is very lopsided in my favor. And we do 14 damage to the other player, which is a lot. As the game goes on, you also take more damage from losing. So we're on stage four right now, and you take more damage uh, as you get deeper into the game, which makes sense. Uh, like the longer the game goes on, the more damage people take for losing a round. All right, so we are about to hit the stage four carousel. Again, the pattern is always the same. You always start out with three PvP rounds, rounds against other players. Then there's a carousel, and then there are two PvP rounds, and then there is uh, another minion round at the end of it. The first three stages, or stage four, stage three, and st or stage two, stage three, stage four, now have an armory round on the second stage. 
on uh, 2-2, two, 3-2, two, two, and 4-2. But after that, there's no more armory, so only three armories for the whole game. So we're about to get another carousel, and I need to be thinking about what items I want to pick up here. I currently have two Brawler's Gloves on my bench, one of them a Shadow Brawler's Glove. What I'm really looking to do is to get one more item for my future Karma. I have a blue buff right now, and I have a... Uh, Jeweled Gauntlet, which again gives critical strike chance. So I really would like to get one more item to fill out that last spot. Something with extra critical strike chance would potentially be good. Something that provides... Uh, and wow, this round's pretty close. Can Vlad clutch it out? Yes, yes he can. So something that provides more ability power, which would build out of a rod, or something that provides more critical strike chance, which would build out of a, a probably a sword. Uh, you see me immediately go to the Kindred, who has a shadow... Uh, rod, which would be a really nice item if I can get it. Also, that BF sword would be really nice too, because I could form a, an, an Infinity Edge, Shadow Infinity Edge, which would be really nice to pair with that uh, Jeweled Gauntlet that I have. But that item gets taken as well, so that's not a possibility. So I have to try to pick from what's left over here. I have a Shadow Belt where I have sh where I have tiers, and so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just pick up the tier. So I do have the option to build a, a, a Shadow Hand of Justice for this last slot, which is not a great, it's not the ideal item to put in this slot, but I will go ahead and build this item anyway. And now that I've hit 8, I'm going to start rolling. So this was my goal, get to 8 and start rolling. So this is really where the meat of the gameplay comes in, is can you now build your team at higher levels by rolling down? I'm looking for particular units. I'm really looking for Karma here, and there I finally find Karma. So I'm going to move her over here. I want to transfer these items over, the blue buff, the jeweled gauntlet, and I'm going to make the Shadow Hand of Justice, which is officially called the Hand of Vengeance, an item that provides extra ability power and also uh, damage on, uh, provides extra uh, attack damage, ability power, and gives back some life on hit. But uh, it, it uh, t the benefits turn off on every kill. So they, you start with the benefits, then they turn off on a kill, then they turn back on if you get another kill. It's a little bit of a high risk, high reward item. It's not anywhere close to ideal for Karma. I would much rather have like a, a death cap here, or have uh, an infinity uh, an infinity edge to pair with her jeweled gauntlet, which would give her more critical strike damage. But uh, it's not bad, and uh, it, you know it's what I've hit here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this. But in retrospect, maybe I should have waited until we have one more minion round coming up shortly. Maybe I should have gone ahead and made that. So again, I'm trying to change up my team. I'm trying to do the most difficult thing in the game, which is to switch from an early game team composition into a later game team competition, uh, a later game team comp. So I'm trying to replace some of these early game units. Like I replaced the Poppy. She's an early game knight. I uh, got Gragas into the setup. So now I have four Dawnbringers. Dawnbringers, again, units that are going to heal to a higher... They're going to heal back health when they drop low in the fights. I'm also watching... You also see me scouting the other teams a lot. I haven't talked too much about this because I've been trying to more cover the basics in this match. But uh, you can always watch what the other teams are doing. Like, this is a game that does not have hidden knowledge. You can always see what the other people are playing. And it's useful to try and watch what other people are doing. Uh, in particular, the way that the matchmaking works is you uh, generally do not hit the same players multiple rounds in a row. Uh, the math can change up a little bit when you get fewer... Once players start getting knocked out, the math can change up a little bit. But like if you've seen a player recently, you generally don't see them again for at least four rounds is typically the way it goes. So you can kind of scout the lobby and see who is who you haven't hit recently and know that you're likely to hit one of like two or three other players. So I've been trying to scout the lobby, trying to be diligent about doing this, and trying to uh, make sure that I have uh and well positioned to deal with some of the other teams in particular i need to keep karma safe she really does not have a defensive item she's kind of all offensive here so if she gets jumped on by like an assassin she can die relatively quickly so i'm trying to keep her protected and safe i have her in the corner right now with uh, a bunch of other units surrounding her and then here off of this minion round i actually get an item that would have been quite a bit better for karma i could have made a gunblade here which is a bit unfortunate i was like oh i wish i had held off for that last slot but now i'm gonna roll again i want to roll here i do have the option to try to get to level nine but i want to upgrade my board i think i can get stronger i'm gonna take out the uh warwick who again is an early game unit and replace him with volibear who is a legendary five cost unit also a brawler but a much much better brawler and now I'm going to take out the Thresh, and I'm going to put in Kale, who's another strong unit. And I actually have pretty good Kale items here. So this is one of the benefits of holding off there. I actually can make some pretty decent Kale items. I'm going to make Infinity Edge, which is not ideal for her, but is still decent. And I'm also going to make a Rage Blade, which is probably her best in slot item. You want uh, For her, you'd like to have Rage Blade and then a defensive item. Ideally, Guardian Angel. She actually dies pretty quickly, but that's all right. She was able to get off some attacks. Uh, Kale is a late game unit. She uh, she basically scales 
with the duration of the fight. The longer the fight lasts, the stronger she gets. And the other key thing is I was able to get up to the two-star karma. I found two other karmas there, which was fantastic. Uh, I was able to get karma two-star. She gets much, much stronger for being a two-star unit, as all units do when they get two-star. And so now I'm clear to go to level nine. I wanted to roll to get stronger there. I wanted to hit some of my key units, and I was able to do that. I got the two-star karma. I got a two-star Tarek, who's uh, protection for karma. I got a two-star Ivern, who also provides for protection for karma. And uh, so, yeah, now I'm feeling pretty good with my board. I think I can just econ straight up to level nine. So I will not roll anymore. The reason for that is I believe I'm strong enough in this lobby to survive against these other players. They are all going to be rolling down. So I'm expecting to start losing rounds because the other players are going to be, you know, they're going to be getting low. They're all much lower than me on health right now. They're going to have to start rolling down, spending their money to upgrade their board. And uh, I will not do that because I'm in such great shape on health. But uh, the trade-off will be I will be able to get to level 9 where I have the best odds to find legendary units. For example, I'll have much better odds to 2-star the Kale and 2-star the Volibear by going up to level 9. And here we're just kind of dumpstering this comp again. Volibear's ultimate is he jumps into the middle of the enemy team and knocks everybody up. And he just got off a fantastic ultimate there. I have given that Gargoyle Stone Plate to him to make him a little bit tankier. Again, it's not a great late game item. It's much more of an early game item. But, uh, you know, it'll still help keep him alive a little bit longer. And so he can jump into the enemy team and apply his crowd control. He's a fantastic frontliner to play in the late game. The difficulty is getting to him. Similarly, Kale, a fantastic late game unit. Trouble is trying to get to him. Uh, get to her, excuse me. And, uh, you know, that's really the core of the gameplay is you, you build your team, you manage your economy, you have to look for the items that you want. Like, this is not the ideal karma build. But, like, I've got pretty good stuff on her. I'm reasonably pleased with the items that I have. And, I, you know, you play around the items that you get, and you play around the champions you get, and you do your best to make the best team possible. And then there is still room for, like, positioning in these fights. So one of the reasons why I've been staying on the right-hand side is I've been trying to position away from some of the comps that are on uh, the other side. I've been trying to dodge some of the assassins. In the previous round, not this one, but the previous round, there was a Velkaz who was on the right-hand side. Vokas fires out this big beam that will hit uh, in like a diagonal line. So I was positioned to stay on the opposite side from the Vokas. We also have a really weird setup in the lobby here. There's the Vilkaz right now. He's going to fire the beam, and yeah, as soon as that happens, Vlad's going to die. Uh, we actually have a really weird lobby right now. I have 95 health, and the other players are at 14, 14, 12, 12, 11, 11, 10. This is exceedingly bizarre. This just does not happen in the game. You <laughs> really do not see this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm pretty much locked into like a top two or three finish just because I have so much health bank right now. Having health in your back pocket is extremely valuable. Just because, you know, the game ends when people get knocked out. You don't have to have the best team if you're able to have a ton of health bank. You can have, like, the fourth best team, but if the other players all knock each other out, you know, you can still maybe get second if you just have this much health. So this is a really weird and unusual situation. I was honestly wondering at this point, am I just going to win the lobby with 95 health? Um, but I am still expecting other players to start beating me in these rounds. Because, look, people are they are so low. They're about to die. They're spending all their gold. Look, everybody else is rolling down. And I should mention this. Graphically, you can see how much gold the other person has in their bank by those little gold icons. So, like, right now, you, if you see, I have five gold icons on the left-hand side of the stage. And you can see how much gold the other players have because they will also have them. See, see the five little gold coins on the left-hand side? That means I have over 50 gold. This person I'm about to hit, they have 10 gold in the bank. Crazed kid. And we know that because uh, there's the little graphical indicator. So you can see when other players are rolling down. By the way, that Volibear ultimate is just fantastic again. Amazing stuff. So then Karma is going to start casting, and she has enough health to survive the, the Velkaz ult. Again, I wasn't as worried about this Velkaz because this Velkaz was only one star. It gets off one cast, but then uh, is unable to get off the second one. And now can I kill this Aphelios? Do I have enough to kill off this unit? Oh, I get the knockup from Daisy. There we go. So that little golem is... Uh, something that the Ivern puts on the board, got the knockup on the Aphelios, and that was enough for Karma to get the kill. So I've been on another eight-match winning streak. The only sad thing is I lost that one round. That If you remember, I lost that one round really closely. And uh, otherwise, I would have won every single round up to this point in the game. I, I was almost on a 20-match winning streak here. So uh, as I said, I've, I think I've done a good job in this game, but I've also been pretty lucky in terms of hitting stuff. And now you can see me looking at which comps I'm expecting to hit. I'm going to reposition over to here. Uh, because I think it's a little bit safer based on the stuff that I have. I did slap another tank item on the Volibear. I was last to pick off the carousel, so I wasn't able to get the stuff I really wanted. And now I'm up against another Aphelios player. 
a number of people running a failure here. I had uh, moved over because I was trying to keep the Diana, who dives into the back lines, away from my Kale. But uh, this round actually is not going that great. It's a nice Kindred Ultimate over on the other side to protect the Aphelios. Aphelios' shield gets triggered. And I clearly have just not managed to get, cut through this team fast enough. So this person, Doubt, who is clearly the strongest other player in the lobby, you can notice that Doubt is on this win streak as well. That Aphelios is very well built, does 10,000 damage, and so is able to run their win streak up to 5. So I do, I'm not able to end the game on 95 HP. Womp womp. It's a little bit sad, but I am going to make it up to level 9. I'm going to have a huge amount of gold to roll with here at level 9, so I can play another unit. I'm going to have to figure out what, what unit I play is going to depend on what unit I hit. The unit I really want is called Garen. Garen's a legendary unit, and uh, he's a Dawnbringer, so he fits in really well with this team. And uh, he also has an ultimate that shreds magic resistance on the other team. My team is almost entirely magic damage, so uh, having that magic resist shred for the other team would really, really help me. But I'd also love to two-star the Kale. I'd also love to two-star the Volibear. Those are all things that would make me much stronger here. And uh, in addition, getting Garen in would be really nice. So now I'm going to roll, and I'm looking for some of these units. Again, how quickly you can roll is a big deal. Uh, I should also mention Teemo is in the store. Teemo is kind of an interesting unit. He doesn't cost gold to purchase. He costs health to purchase. And uh, I actually hit a two-star Heimerdinger, so I'm going to look to play him here. Heimer is another... Uh, he, I was going to say support unit, but he actually does really good damage. And I actually have not had a very good roll down here. I did not find any Volo Bears. Did not find any Garens. I did not find any Kales. So uh, not a very good roll down, honestly. But I did find two-star Heimer, and that's not bad. Here at level 9, you have 15% odds to find the 5-cost units, which are the game's strongest units. So you, you really want to get here if you can. The difficulty is, can you reach this level to get there? Uh, so Heimer puts down a turret, and his turret fires like this big blast of dragon fire that hits everything on the board, and serves as a healing debuff. He's a nice unit to have, and he he's not like the most core unit I would play in this team, but I hit a 2-star version of him, so I'm going to look to play the... The Heimerdinger. He's certainly not bad. All right, so now it's time to keep rolling. We get the little graphical indicator because we are top four. I uh, actually want more gold to roll, so I'm gonna take. I'm gonna buy Teemos and then sell them. This is something you normally wouldn't do. Uh, so I, I lost 12 health there just so I could roll more uh, with the Teemo. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, I already made two star kale, so now I can sell that extra kale. I found two Volo Bears. I would love to get one more. One more Volibear would be fantastic. So again, I'm still trying to position my team here. I actually have Tarek slightly mispositioned here. He should be standing next to Ivern um, because he has a he and Kale together form a trait called Burdened, which uh, protects units standing next to them from crowd control for uh, the first couple seconds of the fight. But uh, I know I'm much stronger than this person. This is Crazed Kid. I'm actually hitting Crazed Kid's Ghost because uh, Crazed Kid uh, himself is hitting uh, Doubt. This happens when there's an odd number of players still alive in the lobby. And Doubt is going to win that. So as, as I knew it would be, it's just going to be down to me against Doubt here on uh, at the end of the game. I'm hoping that I have scaled past this player because I've managed to get up to the level 9. Boy, more Heimerdingers. The game really wants me to play Heimer. So many Heimers. So many Heimers and Viegos here in the store. So unfortunately, I don't hit there. And that was a little bit... A little bit of a disappointment. I didn't find Garen. I didn't find the two-star Voli. I found 10,000 Heimers and 10,000 Viegos. And I'm not playing Viego, who's an assassin unit. Doesn't really fit this comp. But uh, I've got the two-star Heimer. I've got the two-star Kale. Kale, in particular, really boosts my damage output. I actually have three major threats right now. Heimer puts out a lot of damage. Kale puts out a lot of damage. And, of course, Karma is still the basis of my team. So I've tried to position a little bit away from the Diana. And Voli gets off an amazing ult. Good job, Vola Bear. Love having that guy. He also has a frozen heart, which is slowing the attack speed of everybody near him. Uh, good person to put the frozen heart on because it's a tank item, and he also likes to jump into the middle, middle of the enemy team. And we've just outscaled this person. See, Doubt had to roll down at level 8. It was the right call to do so because Doubt was low on health, but because I was able to econ to 9, I just outscaled this player. So we're both going to say GG, very polite, and I'm going to say good luck in set 5 since it's the very start of the set. Doubt, very polite, same to you. And that's the that's the first game. So it's a win. It's an easy win. I get a ridiculous amount of LP because it's the start of the set. And uh, there you go. There's a successful ranked placement match. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope this was a useful introduction here to set five. Uh, you're welcome to come join us if you'd like to. We run games periodically. Uh, until then, have a good one. Take care. See you soon.